The time now is half past eleven. The makers of Royco Soup and Surf present... Death touched my shoulder. Today we tell of a strange series of coincidences that saved the lives of many people. This story was sent to us by Mrs. G. King of Cowie Road, Durban, and we call it Bridge Awash. I can't run any further, Mary. I can't. You must, Martha. You must. Uh, oh, come on. Don't sit uh, there. We must stop that bus. We must. Oh, you said must four times in a row, dear. Oh, for goodness sake, who cares? Martha, there is no excuse for bearing... Look, I'm going and leaving you here. The lives of many people depend on it. Don't take our word for Royco Cape Dutch Cream of Vegetable Soup. Ask Omar. Here's the soup I loved as a little girl. New Royco Cape Dutch Cream of Vegetable Soup is just like my old Omar made. She used a special recipe learned by heart in the good old Cape days. Yes, Royco Cape Dutch Cream of Vegetable Soup is the real thing. It even smells right. Thank you, Omar. And only Royco make real old Cape Dutch Cream of Vegetable Soup, filled with the good things you would choose. Surf with Super Blue puts true whiteness back into your wash. A real white, a true white. It's Super Blue white. Trust Surf to get your wash truly white. The white of Surf with Super Blue. Martha, what are you doing? Ringing the grammatical errors in this newspaper. They're disgraceful. Oh, look at that. Do you see? At least 12. Well, I think it's a complete waste of time. Oh, how can you expect a standard of education when newspapers display such abysmal ignorance? Ah, there's another. You see that? A typographical error. Oh, forget it. Really, dear, there is no need to snap. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm worried about Peter. He said he'd ring at seven and look at the time. Well, I suppose he's been delayed or perhaps this wind has brought down the telephone lines. I mean, anything could have happened. Well, that's just it. Anything could have happened. Now, Mary, it's no good thinking the worst. Peter is a strong, able-bodied young man. Oh, dear, there's a misspelt word. I, I ring that too. There. Mrs. Patrick was saying that there are ghastly storms everywhere and Peter's such an impatient driver. Oh, we're fortunate the storm has not struck this part of the country. Yes, it's coming up fast. Do you see those clouds over there? Now, that's what you call wishing a storm onto us. Don't see the clouds and we will escape. That's the way it is always. Oh, and, and there's another thing. Ah, oh, that will be Peter to say everything's all right. Hello? Peter. Oh, I'm so glad to hear your voice. What? No, of course I'm not worrying. Uh, what's that? Gearbox? Oh, no. But it's a new car. Well, shall I come and fetch you? Uh, no, it's not waiting at present, but it will any moment. Mary, remember what I said. Uh, what's that? The bus. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, yes, at eight. All right, do that and you can collect the car tomorrow. Bye, darling. Be seeing you. Now, what's happened? His car's developed gearbox trouble, and he had to be towed back to town. He says it's pelting with rain. Oh, here it comes. Thanks to you. Oh, Martha. I said it, and I mean you. You brought the storm on yourself. Oh, and it is a particularly horrible one. I, I, I think I shall retire under the blankets. There's nothing worse than these wretched storms in this part of the country. The whole atmosphere seems electrified. Peter's coming back in the late bus. I'm glad he's being sensible about this and didn't expect you to drive 50 miles and fetch him. Oh, well, I, I must take cover. I'll join you for a strong cup of tea when the danger is past. I was relieved when Martha left me. Her carefully ringed newspaper lay on the small table and the sight of it irritated me. 
I walked across to the window. Below me, the countryside lay stretched like thick black cotton wool. The lightning was now flashing vividly, and then the rain lashed down, great drops which turned to torrents. There was something grand and wild and fearful in the scene. I stood a moment longer watching, and then a particularly vicious flash of lightning stabbed across the sky, sending forked fingers earthwards. I could see it strike straight into a plantation of great wattle trees which flanked the road bridge. In my imagination, I saw one of those giant trees split and then crash to the ground. I turned from the window and drew the curtain, but I felt uneasy. Perhaps that wasn't imagination, but some sixth sense warning me of the danger. I tried to concentrate on the newspaper, but found I couldn't. I walked to the back of the house, but could see no light in the servants' quarters. If a tree had fallen on the bridge, what of the traffic easing through the rain and mist, unaware of the danger ahead of them? I walked through to Aunt Martha, anything to talk to someone. There was a vast bulk in the bed, completely concealed by thick blankets. I remember calling, Martha, Aunt Martha. Oh, oh, go away until after it's all over. I want to talk to you. In this, you must be mad. I have a steel bridge in my mouth. It's a fearsome lightning conductor. Martha, please. I think one of the wattles has been struck near the road bridge. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. <gasps> go to bed, Mary, and don't be foolhardy. What if the bridge has been damaged? What did you say? Road bridge damaged? If a wattle fell directly onto it, it's possible it has been. Oh, my dear child, what a frightful thought. I'll phone through to Sergeant Fender and ask him to check. What? Use a telephone in this? Be suicide. But I must. Oh, really, you are most tiresome. Why not wait for Peter to come back? He'll know what to do. Peter will be using that bridge. Oh, my. Exactly. I'll phone through to Sergeant Fenton now. Oh, be careful, for goodness sake. Oh, I'm going into retreat again. Oh, what a barbarous country to have storms like these. Oh! I wasn't too happy myself about using the telephone. But it was dead in my fingers. There was no chance at all of raising the exchange or warning the police. Then I was compelled. I was almost forced to do something about it myself. I went through to my aunt again. Oh, now what's the matter? I can't raise the exchange. I'll drive down to the bridge and see if it's all right. What did you say? Oh, look, I can't repeat everything I say, so listen to me. I'm driving down to the bridge to check. You will do no such thing. Wake the servants. They don't seem to be there. I must do something about Mary, this. Mary, listen to me. If that wretched bridge has been damaged, car headlights will pick it up. When the visibility is nil, never. Well, then, just hold the right thought. I'm not arguing about this. I'm going right now. You stay here. I shan't be long. I can't allow you to go out in this alone. Oh, Aunt Martha. Well, I'm I'm coming too. Oh, no. I'll wrap up well and accompany you. Though heaven knows I still think you are completely insane. Almost before I sat in the car, I knew it wouldn't start. It was as dead as the telephone. Martha sat beside me, straight and disapproving, while the lightning still danced and lunged across the sky. Neither of us spoke as we left the car, and on one accord walked down the long road towards the gate. The water rushed around our ankles, and the red earth was churned into thick mud. The river, normally a gentle stream, rushed and rampaged. Ahead of us was the wattle plantation. And then, as I'd seen it in my mind, it materialized. A great tree had crashed across the bridge, shattering the side and straddling the road. This was a death trap to any unsuspecting motorist. My dear child, this is too terrible. A motorist couldn't see it in this ghastly weather. We'd better walk to the village just as fast as we can. Walk? To the village? But that's all we can do. Oh, but it's over five miles. Let's I've... not argue about this. Let's go. Oh. Come on. It was a walk into a nightmare. The rain still slashed down. The thunder roared and rumbled and then crashed like giant waves around us. There was lightning too. Always that lightning dominating the scene. I found myself running and praying that we'd see a motorist who'd help us. But there was no one. And then Martha collapsed onto a sodden patch of grass. Oh, I can't run any further. Mary, I can't. You must, Martha, you must. Oh, oh, come on, don't sit there. We must stop that bus. We must. 
Oh, you said must four times in a row, dear. Oh, for goodness sake, who cares? Mary, there is no excuse for being... Look, I'm going and leaving you here. The lives of many people depend on it. Right, I'm coming. Well, Ooh. come on, then. There's no time to lose. We staggered into the tiny village half an hour later. Sergeant Fenter was on duty. Mrs. King, hey, what are you doing here? Hey, what's going wrong? It, it's the bridge. There's a tree crashed across it. What? I couldn't phone. The line's down and, and the car wouldn't start. Well, uh, I'll send the van around there straight away. And now you sit where you are and I'll get you some coffee, eh? I shan't be a moment. Oh, I never thought I would be pleased to sit in a police station. But I am... What a relief. You know, Mary, I've been Yes, thinking. if it's about misspelt words, I How don't... did you guess? That calendar. Do you see the way they've spelt the... I'm not interested. I'm exhausted. Oh, darling, it was a very heroic thing you did. I would still be under those blankets. There you are. Here's your coffee. Uh, now I've sent the van and we'll stop the bus at the turn-off. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. That was the best cup of coffee I've ever had. The bus was stopped, and I watched Peter climb off and almost laughed at the look of amazement on his face when he saw me. That could be the end of my story, but it isn't. There was a fantastic postscript. What a spread when you add the creamy cheesiness of Melrose Cheese World to sandwiches and snacks. Creamy smooth cheese that spreads with ease. Melrose Cheese World. Yes, Melrose Cheese World is real dairy fresh cheese whipped and blended with butter into a creamy smooth spread. What a well of a way to have cheese. Melrose Cheese World. Give yourself a spread. Add the creamy cheesiness of Melrose Cheese World. Dove with Super Blue puts true whiteness back into your watch. A real white, a true white. It's Super Blue! What? Trust Surf to get your wash truly white. The white of Surf with Super Blue. Peter looked at my car in the morning. The battery was dead. But there was something else inside very much alive. A thick puff adder which lay across the back seat. We all asked ourselves the same question. Had it been there the night before? And if so, how fortunate my car didn't start and irritate the monster into striking. Thank you for a fascinating story, Mrs. G. King of Cowie Road, Durban. Our sponsor's check for ten rands will be sent to you shortly. Now, don't forget, listeners, we welcome your letters. If death has ever touched your shoulder, do write in and tell us about it. Our address, Death Touched My Shoulder, Box 1540, Durban. Death Touched My Shoulder... Box 1540 Durban. Do write soon, won't you? Be listening again on Saturday morning at 11.45 when we will present the story of another true experience in our series, Death Touched My Shoulder. Death Touched My Shoulder was presented by the makers of Melrose Cheese Whirl and Surf. Listen again on Saturday morning at 11.45 for another interesting story in Death Touched My Shoulder. You're tuned to the national network of Springbok Radio, Springbok Radio for brighter broadcasting, and the time is a quarter to twelve.